Hi everyone, this is Sandeep Manan. There's this famous American game show called Let's Make a Deal. It's quite popular in US. And the same program format was broadcasted in different parts of the world in different names and patterns. And it was hosted in America by a person called Monty Hall. And there is a problem that came in the name of Monty Hall. It's called Monty Hall problem, which is a brain teaser in the form of a probabilistic puzzle. Now it applies a lot. The theory of probability applies a lot in the world of investing. Because investing is all about probability and we should always stack up odds in our favor for higher returns and also avoid all type of investing behavior that can work against our returns. Now, how is this achieved? It's primarily through some concepts which were famously propagated by Benjamin Graham called value investing. It's practiced over many decades now and also other concepts like growth investing. Whatever the format and type of investing you follow, we should really apply the theory of probability that works in our favor for higher returns. And let's now understand what Monty Hall problem is and how that really can help us become better investors. So here is a game show. Uh, you are on the game show, game show and you can see the participants there, the picture. And uh, suppose Monty Hall comes to you and uh, you are given choice of three doors. There is a car, which is your gift position behind one of those doors you have to guess that door which has the car behind it and you get the car if you guess right and the other two doors has a goat behind it which is something you know you might not want compared to a car now uh, you have to guess the door which has a car behind it let's get into two scenarios hypothetical right so the first scenario most important thing here before even we proceed is that understand the host knows which uh, what's behind each door that's something the host knows you don't know. Now suppose the car is behind the door number two and you guess door number one. The host will open the third door, which is neither the door which has car behind it, nor the one you guessed. And the host will give you an option if you want to switch your choice. Original choice was one in this scenario. Do you want to switch to two? Now what happens? If you stick to your choice, you lose because you'll get a goat. And if you switch, then you win because you will end up in the door number two. Now this is one scenario. The second scenario is the same conditions prevail. Car is behind door number two and you guessed, but this time right door, which is door number two. Now the host will show you door number three, which is neither the door which has car behind, nor the one you guessed. And, you know, gives you an option if you really want to switch your choice from door number two to door number one. Now, in this time, if you stick with your choice, you win. And if you switch, you lose. So we saw both scenarios with the same set of, you know, car behind the same set of doors. Now, question to think here is really, in terms of theory of probability, is it better to switch when you're given a choice or better to stick to your choice or doesn't it matter at all? Now, let's take two scenarios hypothetically. Now. First one, don't switch. You don't switch and you stay with the initial choice. What is your probability of winning? It's only one third. And probability of losing is two third because the two doors has, you know, no car behind it. So your probability of losing is two by three. We saw the scenario earlier. Now, what happens when you switch always? So under what condition will you win? If your initial pick is wrong, like we saw in scenario one, and then if you switch, you always win. Why? Because the host will show one of the other wrong doors and you will win if you switch no matter what. So your probability of winning is higher here, which is two third. And under what condition will you lose? Now, if your initial pick uh, is right door, like scenario two, and if you switch your probability of, uh, you know, and what's the probability of choosing the right door initially and you lose by switching, it is one third. So what are you arriving at using out of this? Your probability of winning is always higher when you do always switch. And if you don't switch, your probability of winning is only one third. So this is a Monty Hall problem and there is a lot of debates and theories around this. You could do a lot of research, it's available in the internet. Now, let us see how to increase your winning probabilities when it comes to investing, how to apply the probabilities. Because it's all about probabilities about and increasing your chances of higher returns in the world of investing. So when we create a portfolio of 15 stocks, 20 stocks, 25 stocks, say, let's take a hypothetical example. Few of them are going to be terribly wrong than you anticipate. It will have lesser returns or even it can go to zero. 
But what really matters is the ones that you're getting right should really hit the thing out of the park. Like the right ones really overrules the wrong ones in your portfolio, then by a greater margin, which is usually the case for most investors because 80% of returns from a portfolio comes from 20, 25% of stocks, then you have made it home. Now, if you take away one thing from this whole session or video is what I marked in red. This is because the downside, if you invest in one stock, the downside is only 100%, which means it can go to zero. But the upside in returns could be 10 times, 50 times, or even 100 times. So it is not a symmetrical bet in terms of the loss versus a gain. And the probability is when you find such opportunities, you have to increase your allocation accordingly and prune the ones which are making losses or made, you have made mistakes. That is the way to increase your probability to achieve higher returns. Now, this is what Warren Buffett said in one of the Berkshire meetings. Take the probability of loss times the amount of possible loss from the probability of gain times the amount of possible gain. That is what we are trying to do. It's imperfect, but that's what it's all about. So you're trying to increase your odds. You're trying to increase your returns by riding on the winning ones and increasing your allocation towards the winning ones that you found it right and reducing and pruning frequently. If you really understood that what investments you made is wrong in certain investments, and then just stay through the course. That is how the higher returns are made. And so when the opportunity is obvious, and if the leaders in the market segment is not fully valued yet for whatever reasons, we need to increase allocations to such opportunities, which increases the odds of higher returns of the portfolio. Easily said than done. But we can see many, many realistic examples like in the today's, uh, in the recent uh, market uptrends, we are seeing many such scenarios. So this could be, as I said, in the starting of the video, this could be played through the value investing course, which was propagated by Benjamin Graham. This could be through the growth or the technology and innovation kind of investments. So deep value stocks is basically two conditions where it is mispriced value in underlying assets of a stock or of a company but the market is perceiving it very cheap due to whatever reasons. So that is one fine way, one way to find the value in through the assets. The other way is markets mispricing the stock due to near term earnings headwinds, but long term earning potential still remains intact. That is uh, the underpricing by the markets in the earnings. Uh, so there are two scenarios. One is on the assets, underlying assets, which is, uh, you know, hard assets, which are heavy, asset heavy models of businesses and also market pricing the stock due to earnings model, which is underpricing the you know potential earnings, then you get deep value stocks. Then there is growth stocks in next emerging trends, which the market is unable to evangelize or foresee and you get opportunities. Examples, we recently saw one year back, this media shift was shifting, media was shifting from cord cutting. The cable TV was dead, you know, nearing dead, and it was moving to streaming. And it was in the nascent stages one or two years or back. And we saw how that played out and still playing out in the recent trends. Many such stocks had gone up in that trend. Advertising spend shifting from you know the traditional media like TV, news channel to newspapers to social media and uh, many other like uh, streaming media. And we saw that how the, recently the uptrend is happening in many of the stocks there. Similarly, digital commerce, the shift from brick and mortar retail to the physical, to the digital or e-commerce, which is big time, especially current year that we are seeing the shift. Cloud computing, the whole applications on premise and uh, slower, uh, lower capacity models have changed to you know cloud computing and elastic computing. And uh, the other trend that's been recently we saw with Apple launch, uh, you know, 5G catching up, you can see, you know, it, it keeps happening in many industries, uh, electric and autonomous vehicles is another industry. So Tesla, you know, it was undervalued two, three years back and it's gone up four, five times. So when the market really does not perceive it, there is an opportunity. And when it realizes the potential that trend is catching up and playing, you could see that the you know, re-rating happens for these kind of stocks.
So finally, to conclude, the key takeaway is when we find winning propositions, increase the probability of higher returns by increasing your asset allocation towards such winning propositions. And when we find losing propositions or by mistakes that we carry out, realize the mistakes and prune and reduce the allocations towards such kind of mistakes so that overall portfolio returns tends to be calibrated higher with higher probability of winning. So. We seldom get such winning propositions, but when we get such propositions, realize that and increase the probability of higher returns so that we do well in the investment world. So that's the whole uh, key takeaway from Monty Hall problem and theory of probabilities, how it applies to investing. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for staying with me.